to the Weight Loss with Plants podcast brought to you by the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. I'm your host, Sharm Ridley. As we get older, we tend to think weight loss is almost impossible. Well, our guests today have stories to tell that just might make you consider how following a plant-based lifestyle can help with finally getting to a healthy weight. On today's episode, we are joined by Ben and Esther Leverage. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. It's our pleasure to be here. It's so exciting to be here too. Thank you. Now, Esther has been telling her story to anyone who will listen for years and has even written a book that we'll talk about a little bit later. Ben is just beginning to share his story. So I'd like to start with you first, Ben, if that's okay. Sounds good to me. (laughs) So what made you begin um, to gain an interest in following a plant-based lifestyle for yourself? Well, Esther is, is the one that started out doing it. And she'll tell you her story later, but I told her when she started this one, we'd been on so many diets and some of them work and then you gain the weight back and all so forth. So when she started this one, it sounded too far out for me at first. And I said, Esther, you're going to have to do this one on your own. I I give. But then over the years, over the next six months to a year, I just started hearing a lot of the things that were going on. She always had somebody on on her phone or on the TV all the time with, you know, information and stuff. And it kind of sunk in a little bit. And I thought, you know, I I, I think I could probably do this maybe. And it, But I said to her, I said, you know, Esther, I'm not going to start it until we get all the meat out of the freezer eaten up. So I, I, I always did the cooking before. So I said, I'll just cook my own meals and you go ahead and do what you're doing. And, and after about four or five months, Esther was showing real progress. And I thought, well, maybe I ought to give this a shot. I don't know, you know. So after Easter that year, which we always had the family over and we always had a big breakfast with eggs and cheese and ham and, you know, I said, when I when that's gone, I said, I'll, I'll cut it out too. So first of all, I cut out the meat and then I cut out the dairy. And then she started saying something about oil. And I thought, well, I'll cut that out too. I, I don't need to cook with it, you know. And I really wasn't going on it to lose weight. I weighed around 230. And if I lost weight, fine. But I was at the time, at time of my life, I thought, I'm just tired of dieting. And, but the thing I learned from on this situation was, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle change. And that's what I started hearing information, you know, a little bit about, like, you know, about the animals. And I never thought about it. You know what I mean? I I grew up in the country and we butchered animals, but I didn't think about it because it just was a way of life, I guess. I got thinking, why are we, why are we eating animals? You know, and then I got to thinking, she, other things came up about, you know, the earth. And I thought, this is, this is just better for the earth. And then I said to myself, if this is better for me, if it's better for the animals, and it's better, better, better for the planet. It's a win situation. So I said, I'm just going to give it a try. And, and to tell you the truth, I never call it a diet because I never, I just ate, you know, the whole food plant based way. And at that time, I said I weighed about 230. And within about a year, I was down to 180. And I thought, wow, this is fantastic. And about a year and a half, I was down to 160. And I've stayed at 160 ever since for about the last two and a half, three years. And without really dieting, without cutting back on food, I just ate what, what I, you know, the plant-based way. And I, I'm not as strict as Esther. I, I, I don't go off and eat anything extra, but I will do some processed food. She's very strict. Won't eat any processed food. And, uh, but I don't eat a lot of processed foods, but like I'll make my beans with canned beans and stuff. And I still do my own cooking because I prefer the way I cook the food than, than the way Esther does. Because it's Esther does it very plain. <laughs> and I like it to taste a little bit like it used to. So that's kind of my story, you know. And uh, it's just 
it's just been a wonderful uh, situation because both of us are doing it now and it makes it a lot easier. So when we go shopping, we're not shopping for different things and stuff. We just, you know, go and get our produce and, and every week it's about the same list of things we buy. And that's, that's pretty much my story about it. What are some other health benefits that you've noticed besides the weight loss? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't, wasn't taking a lot of pills or anything before, and I still don't. I, I have had an ulcer in the past, and I take one protonic pill a day. That's the only medicine I'm on. I do feel, I, I do have a lot more energy. I will say that. And I have, even before, I had gone to the gym for probably, well, 10 years, and I work out every day about 45 minutes to an hour. I'd be on the bike and do swimming and we do a few exercises in there. But I can tell you this, up until the time I started this lifestyle, I didn't lose any weight. You can't, you can't exercise, out-exercise your fork. It's impossible, I can tell you. Because I used to do a lot of working out. And I just stayed around the same. And uh, when I started eating this way, it just fell off for me. And uh, so that's really the health things for me I, that I can say. I did... Big and tall. Oh, well, yeah. It, it, at one time... Even before I was at 230, I weighed 320 pounds. I used to own donut shops, and I, I had, I just, ate, I ate the product too, you know. And so I had gone on other diets and lost down to 230. But that, you know, and now, like Esther just whispered to me, back then I was always buying all my clothes at a big and tall store because I couldn't, couldn't buy anything at a regular store. But now. You know, like I wear a size medium shirt, 32 inch waist. It's, it's, I'm just normal for the one of the first times in my life. Would I feel normal? You had an opportunity to talk to someone else about improving their lives. Uh, what would be a piece of advice that you would give them as far as being successful with this lifestyle? Well, if I were, I, I, Esther is a real preacher. I, I'm not a preacher. I kind of, I don't really give advice unless people ask me for advice. Because a lot of people have seen the transformation, like at the gym and stuff. And then I will tell them, you know, this diet, I don't like to call it a diet. This lifestyle is is a different lifestyle. You'll, you'll, you'll feel better. You'll, mentally you feel better, even, you know, because you, you feel like you're doing, you have a purpose in life other than eating all the time. And it's, the food you eat is good for you. And uh, so if if somebody asks me for advice, I'll tell them exactly how I do it. And uh, some people change, it's hard for some people. They don't want to give up the good, what they call the good life, you know, and I, I understand that because I was in that situation for a long time. And, you know, I, I love sports. And if you watch sports on TV, every commercial is either pizza, hamburgers, beer, or whatever. You know, I, it's just, I know it's hard for some people, but if you want a lifestyle that makes you feel good and clean to yourself, this is the lifestyle. And I, I'm just, I'm sold on it 100%. Well, thank you, Ben. I'm going to turn my attention to Esther now. Mm -hmm. Esther, tell us, how much weight have you lost and how long did it take you to take that off? Oh, well, I only count the weight I lost since I started this program five years ago, and I've lost 130. I was 25 more than that before. I was up to 282. I started this diet at 157. 257. I mean, 257. And it's hard to even think of myself as being in the 100s now. Uh, but like this morning, I weighed uh, 125. So I'm even more than 130. But I always, I've always kept 130 off for two years. I've, someone asked me this morning how long it took. And I said three years. I lost uh, 80 the first year. And then the next year, I lost 25. And the next year, I lost 25. And in the last two years, I have maintained my weight loss. When did you first learn about the connection between weight loss and uh, plant-based eating? Uh, it was in July of 2016. 
and I had been to the doctor uh, because I was having so much problems with my knees. When we were in Ireland, I tell the story, we were walking to the airport, uh, to the terminal, and I could just hardly make it. In fact, I wanted to just sit down and revolt and say, Ben's going to have to come and find me because I can't take another step. So that led me to going to the doctor who said I needed to lose 70 pounds before he could even refer me to orthopedics for a possible knee replacement. So I was just in that in-between space. I'd been on every diet that most of us have heard about, and I didn't know what step to take next. And just at that time, my girlfriend gave me Dr. McDougall's Maximum Weight Loss book. And that's what I learned about it. I didn't really know much about veganism. I didn't know much about vegetarianism. I didn't know really anything about whole food plant-based. And so she gave me that book and I decided it was different. It made sense to me. And I thought I'm gonna follow that book as nearly perfect as I can and put it to the test and see if it works. And if it works, I'm gonna give him the credit. So of course there's many wonderful doctors out there and I've even gotten to meet Dr. Colvin and some of the others too, but Dr. McDougall's book is the one, that's the template I followed, and that's what I give the credit to because it just saved my life. Now, you had, you told me about a sticky note system uh, oh. that helped you to work on your goals. Tell us about that. Oh, well, I was just sitting at the computer one day, and there was this internal sticky note that you can put on your computer, and so I just wrote down that I wanted uh, I, wanted, I set my goals for the first year, and that was to lose 70 pounds, and I wanted to become more agile, and I wanted to get off my medications, and I put down that I wanted my eyesight to improve. And why I put that, I don't know. I don't know why, but all were accomplished within that first year. I got off all the medication, and my eyesight did improve. And I can, that's another story, but yeah, so that's, that's what the sticky note was about. And I just kept that there and I was glad I did because it kept being a reminder to me what I wanted to do that first year. Wow. When you first began eating a plant-based diet, uh, how were you able to develop your habits and did you encounter any challenges at the beginning? Well, of course you get, anytime you tell someone you're doing a new program or something, you're going to get challenged, but Basically, what I did is I asked for help from Ben, and I said, I know I've been through this drill before, but I need some help, and all I really asked him to do, after he said, I could never eat like you, I said, that's okay, you can do your cooking, I'll do mine, but I asked him, would he agree not to bring any sweets into the house, and that was a big thing, because just that one recognition of me wanting help and him being willing to help me with that made a big difference. And so um, we just didn't have anything in the house that, well, there was a few things that he was still eating, but, you know, they didn't bother me. But I think it's really important to clean out your house. So I know the sweets were what would have tempted me the most. So Basically, I just went in and I knew what I could eat, and that was my fruits and vegetables, grains and beans, and uh, took calorie density into account. And as long as you stay on that end of the scale, you know, you just, you will be forever slim. You cannot gain your weight back by eating that way. So, and the challenge, I guess, would be, you know, um, we've traveled a lot, we've taken a lot of cruises, and we've been all over the world. So it was a challenge to let our tour guide know that, that we, what we were at that time both vegan um, and asked for our, for our airline you know, to comply with that. And the ship was wonderful. They had a special menu for vegan, vegetarians, and um, gluten-free people. So we just selected. It still takes willpower. It still it takes commitment to go through that buffet line and not get seduced by all those beautiful things but you know commitment's important and when you make a commitment that's a commitment i kind of laugh and i say you know when we got married we didn't say i'll try we said i do and that's kind of how it was for me when i saw the light and decided to really follow this program and it's i've never looked back it's wonderful what are some improvements that you experienced besides the weight loss? Tell us a little bit more about that, including the eyesight. Oh, okay. Elaborate more on several of your other uh, situations that have improved. 
Yes. Well, you know, the funny thing is, if someone had said to me at that time when I was complaining about my knees, how's your health? I'd say, oh, I'm fine. I mean, yeah, I'm a little overweight and have big bones. You know how it is. But I'm not, I mean, I was fat. In fact, I was morbidly obese, which I didn't like that. That was very insulting. But, you know, the fact that I had GERD, I had diverticulitis, I had high blood pressure, I was pre-diabetic, I had constipation, I had sleep apnea, I had, uh, had been, I'd been taking lithium for 30 years uh, as a insurance about not having a manic episode. So I was still, t and then I was taking sleeping pills and pain pills and statins, but I wasn't sick, you see. <laughs> and, um, and I'm sure there were other things like I was probably vitamin D deficient and I think I was anemia at one time. So I had quite a long list of ailments and plus I had uh, a macular pucker in my right eye. I had my cat. I still had cataracts, and I had a condition called uh, pseudo defoliation or exfoliation, which makes cataract surgery more difficult. And so I was already seeing my uh, ophthalmologist on a regular basis for the macular pucker. So just three months after I started this program, I went to see him, and he said that I was now. Available, it was okay now for me to have surgery in my eye. And very sheepishly, I said, well, you know what? I just started a new eating plan about three months ago. And for some reason, I think it's going to help my eyesight too. And I still don't know where I got that idea. And so I said, do I have to have the surgery now? And he said, no. He said, why don't you come back in six months and we'll see how you're doing. So in six months, I went back. And he said, your eyesight's improving. Come back and see me in six months. Six months later, your eyesight's improving. And finally, it was in December of 2019, he said, I, oh, I said to him, you know, I haven't been wearing my glasses lately. I said, should I wear them just to protect my eyes? And as I was walking out the door, he said, with your eyesight, you don't need to wear glasses. I mean, I was, what, 75 at that time? And so last year, I might have the date a little bit off, but last year I went to our Department of Motor Vehicles and took the eye test, and they took corrective lens off my driver's license. So I'm happy camper. I mean, your eyes are just one more organ in our body. Why would not would they not respond? So you talked about other changes as well, like little things. Like you told a story about a rickshaw and and seat belts on the oh, plane. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that. Oh, that was fun. We went, our first trip to China was right after I started this. It was in uh, September of 2016. And I was still so big that I completely filled the rickshaw, you know. And then a couple of years later, we went back again. And then I have pictures of Ben and I sitting in the same little rickshaw and we fit together. And then on the plane, I remember one time it was so embarrassing to have to ask for a seat belt extender, you know. And, and of course, you're really uncomfortable too when your whole body fills up that whole seat, you know. And then when the person in front of you wants to lay their chair back, it really cramps your style. But yeah, there were sometimes, and then sometimes we might visit someone who had really nice antique furniture, you know, and I didn't even know if I should sit down on their chairs. I mean, I didn't think it would break, but what if it did, you know? So, and then I remember when my older son got married. I was at probably my highest. I was in a size 26 dress. And why? I mean, everybody diets before the children's wedding, right? But why I didn't, I don't know. But um, anyway, I wore a size 26 to his dress. And then later, I made a cute little video of me wearing that same dress with another dress on underneath. And I take that size 26 off, and then I have my size 6 dress on underneath. So it is a thrill to go in any shop and and buy and not have to worry about that. But mostly I, you know, I do focus on the weight loss because that's what most American women are worried about is their weight. And I keep saying, if I had my story to tell all over again, I would go back and stress the health because a lot of diets will, will result in weight loss, but I've never been on one where it was sustained. And this is sustainable the rest of your life. And it is a big challenge, but you know the rewards are so wonderful, so wonderful. You said that once. You said that people should go for health first. Yeah. Elaborate a little bit more on that. 
Well, what I mean by that is, if, especially if you're pre-diabetic or you have some heart issues or something like that, you might be tempted to focus on weight loss and go on some silly fad diet and think that's going to take care of the weight. And it might take care of some pounds, but it's not going to cure your heart. It's not going to cure your diabetes. It's not going to take care of so many high blood pressure and everything else. So if you can focus on the fact that you as a person are worthy of the best. You, I mean, you are a wonderful, wonderful person and you're blessed to even be here. And whatever conditions you have in your health, I mean, acknowledge that the, the weight loss could be vanity, you know, and looking good. But what if the insides aren't good? You know, whereas if you can focus on health, then what you do is you might do what Dr. Lyle suggests, and that's not weigh every day because that scale can be an enemy. We can look at the scale and feel like, oh, we can splurge now because the scale went down. Or if the scale stays up, then we blame the food we ate the previous day. But if you can manage weighing three days in a row and taking an average and then waiting a whole month and weigh three days and take an average, then compare the two and you'll have some encouragement then. And the other thing that happens is I always suggest that people take their measurements at the beginning of the plan because a lot of times we reach a weight plateau but we're still losing fat and losing inches. So that's a good measurement as well, to, you know, to have a beginning starting point and a picture because you never know, you might be the next star McDougal or the next star T. Colin Campbell interviewee, you know, and why not spread the word? Because people don't hear this on TV. They don't even hear this when they're, they're doctors, that this can be a way of reversing disease, not maintaining it. So I, I love the title of your book. Um, um, from, from donuts to potatoes. Yes. Um, tell us the story of, of how you got the title first and then and then Ben jump in there if you want as well and then um, and then tell us about your book. Okay. Well today's an important day and this will be recorded later but I just want to tell you that today is my father's birthday and years ago, even before I ever met Ben, he had saved an article um, in the paper that was about Ben's donut shop. But I'll let Ben tell more about that. But anyway, my dad gave me a um, coupon to Ben's donut shop later. And so that's when I started going there. And um, it was kind of our love story because he put a little um, a little business card in my donut bag. Because I came in every day and got my coffee and donut. And so he knew what I wanted. So he put that little note in there. And it wasn't until I got to work and was ready to throw away the bag that I noticed this blue thing. I took it out and it said, hi, I'm Ben. I'd like to get to And I just turned back into like a 16-year-old and didn't know what to do. And so I didn't go back for a couple of days and I didn't call him either. And then finally I thought, well, he's missing a good customer and I'm missing my, maple, my uh, buttermilk bar. That's what I always like. And so I just went back and pretended like nothing had happened. And this time when I left and went out to my car, he went out the back door and met me at my car. And that was 34 years ago, and I've seen him every day since. So it's a beautiful love story. So when we switched from eating donuts every day to eating donut to potatoes, then I thought, well, that's a great story from donuts to potatoes. And when Chef AJ interviewed us, she said, oh, yes, and she has a book from potatoes to donuts. I said, no, 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 it's the other way around. <laughs> so anyway, so that's how the, how I got the title. Um, and I thought, because to potatoes are, are our mainstay, you know, you can live on potatoes. And uh, so that's how it came from donuts to potatoes. So that's. Yeah. Tell us about the book. Well, the book came about because um, after I'd been eating this way, I was trying to tell everybody at the gym uh, about the diet and this one lady said to me Esther you need to start a book uh, a group on Facebook and I said no there's no reason to reinvent the wheel I said I just need to tell them which documentaries to watch and which books to read and you know and and so forth and she said no you need to start a group and so I thought well it's not about me you know but I went home and thought about it and um, I ended up forming this group I think we started with about four or six and now we're over 10,600, so it did grow. But in that 
group every day I post, I think of something inspirational or encouraging or motivational to say to my people. So I think of a word and then I write an essay on that word every day. And so some of the people in my group said, Esther, you should write a book. And I said, why should I write a book when I, I give you the word every day and you have it on your phone or on your iPad, whatever, and it's free. So I said, why should I make a book you have to pay for? And no, you should write a book. So I went through all of my posts from the year 2019 and accumulated those together. And then I added in the donut love story and put in some before and after pictures of me and Ben and, uh, and called it From Donuts to Potatoes. And now it's uh, still being sold on Amazon and all of the uh, royalties go to Dr. McDougall's foundation. That is wonderful. And, yeah. and we are going to show several of your before and after pictures of both of you um, at, at the end of this interview as well. And they are so beautiful and so inspiring uh, mm -hmm. to see them. Uh, you've had an opportunity to, t to tell your story, Esther, on several platforms now. Uh, what is the overall message that you want to share with others? It's never too late. I mean, here I was 72, almost 73. My birthday is next Monday and I'll be 78. And I just never would have dreamed that at my age it could be I mean, I knew I could starve myself and lose a few pounds, but I mean, to realize I would have a whole new life. I mean, this has opened up windows for me to tell my story, to encourage other people. You know, I just feel like I'd like to stand on the street corner and say, America, wake up, wake up. You know, there is an answer to all of this out there. And with all of these wonderful doctors doing their part of the puzzle, you know, I love them all. They all have little interesting things to contribute to it and they're doing so well and that I just it's, it's never too late and if if I can do it I mean, if you follow the program anyone could do it and then you know women say oh yes but my husband won't do this well you, sometimes you have to be the leader in the family in this way and go ahead and, and be the leader and then like it worked out so well that Ben came over and now we can do it together and his story is just as dramatic as mine. So I'm so thankful, Ben, that you're willing to be here, too. Because he's a little more shy, a little more, oh, he's just an introvert or a little. Anyway, I'm a loud mouth. <laughs> but he, he supported me all the way. And without him, I wouldn't be able to have time to do what I do. And, and now it's time for him to tell his story and let men know that you can be strong and virile and watch those good movies like Game Changers and realize that. Um, there's a new life out there for you. In fact, this is so exciting because um, I, a guy I knew when I was 14 years old, we ended up married in the same family, so we've been friends for all these years, and he came out to visit some family members, and, and he didn't talk about the diet this time, but a year earlier I told him about it, and this time I just kept my mouth shut. And when he got home, his wife, who I'd only met one time, she called me, and we spent about an hour on the phone, and she just was ready, just ready. She was in a wheelchair due to some surgery. And so I've been coaching them. And it's just wonderful. I mean, lives can change. And then it even changes you spiritually because you know how good it feels not to be killing the animals? I mean, that's compassion. And we have to have compassion for each other, but for the planet and for the animals and for everything. It just... It's just an internal healing, both physically and mentally and spiritually. It's just um, a three-in-one. As Ben likes horse racing, though he called it a trifecta. Okay. But yeah, it's just it's just it's, it is a big sacrifice. You do face um, challenges from family. I had one brother tell me it's like Esther's gotten a new religion, you know. And um, but when something is so transformational how can you you know how can you not talk about it so when when you face when, the biggest thing i would say to people is be prepared and by that i mean clean out your house because chef aj always says if it's in your house it will be in your mouth if it's not in your house you can eat anything you want anytime you want for whatever reason you want it's just what we eat that we concentrate on so clean your house 
be prepared, always be well stocked with fruits and vegetables, grains and beans. I always keep oatmeal, uh, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, beans and rice, always made in the refrigerator. So it's always something. And you can add a little salad and add a little fruit and you have a whole meal. So be prepared and don't lose hope. Now, Ben mentioned that, that you all have different styles. He likes to have a little bit more flavor in his food. But you once said that you like to keep things simple, that simplicity is key. Tell us yes. a little bit more about that. Oh, I'm happy to tell that. You know, there are so many wonderful chefs out there who can make really, really delicious food. But when I came over to this side, I wanted it to be simple because I take pictures of everything that goes in my mouth and put it on my Facebook group. So people can look at the picture and they can see what it is. It's not some concoction or some exotic recipe. You can do that too. But I think people are drawn to me because I do present it in such a simple way. So when you look at my plate and you see that's a potato, that's a beet, that's Brussels sprouts, that's green beans, you know, I mean, you can identify the food and I want to eat it as close to nature as possible. So I just, I either roast my potatoes and my beets in the oven, or I use an instant pot. I have an instant pot guide that I give to people so they can see all you need is a cup of water, an instant pot, and your food, and how many minutes you're going to cook each thing. It's so simple. And I think when someone first wants to switch over to being vegan um, after eating the sad American diet, it's overwhelming. First of all, it's hard to give up our old addictions. And then on top of that, it's like, well, what do you make and how do you make it? And they get so overwhelmed. And I just show that it's such, it can be such a simple way if you want it. And your taste buds change and pretty soon that's the food you crave. And so, um, yeah, simplicity is my key and it just keeps all those old cravings away. And I don't want any dessert that resembles what I used to like because my tongue is on restriction. It was it was the boss for 60 years or longer, and now I'm the boss, and now my tongue likes what I feed it, and we're happy. So, but Ben, I mean, he eats you know whole food, plant based, of course, but like he might use more uh, like paste picante sauce and some uh, ketchup, and he might air fry some potatoes, and he might have some uh, corn tortillas that would be very very low in fat. And, and um, he uses pasta once in a while. So it's still all within the whole food plant-based programs, you know. It's just that I'm a, a, an extremist. <laughs> but it worked for me. So that's where I'm happy. And the other, you know, his food, if, like if I make soup, I make it just with um, water, actually, and then maybe canned tomatoes and add the vegetables, whereas he might use uh, a better than bouillon uh, vegetable. vegetable broth and but it has a little more sodium in it so obviously when he makes soup I want two or three bowls of it when I make my soup one's enough you know but it's but it's fine it's just that um, I stick with the plain because I'm a food addict and he's not and I was always one that had to finish all the food had to eat you know if I started a pint of ice cream I'd sit there and eat the whole thing and eat the whole pound of candy to get it out of sight whereas he could just He's a moderate person, so if you're moderate, go for it. But if food addiction is an issue for you, or if you think it is, then there are some things that just aren't worth eating. So. Well, the, your story, both of your stories, are just uh, so inspirational uh, for anybody who not only is looking for a way to lose weight finally, because losing weight is hard, yeah. but also to get healthy. And like yeah. you said, uh, Esther, health is, is most important. Yes. And your mental health, too, because, you know, when you go on regular diets, you feel kind of excited that you've lost some weight. And then when you go off, you feel like, a oh, you feel like you're weak. And that those messages inside our brain are, oh, you failed again. You know, you can't do this. Oh, you'll just be fat all your life. And we, most of, a lot of us have those voices in our head that, keep reinforcing the negative but you know when you get on the positive side of life then you realize you can do anything you set your mind to and uh it, it's just it's just wonderful so and there's there are little failures little slip-ups but i 
one of the things I always say is there is no guilt, only learning. So if you if you go off the if you go off the program sometime, don't beat yourself up and then decide you have to wait till New Year's Day to start again. Start with a, your next bite being a potato and just go on and learn. Say, well, what was it that kicked me off and own it for yourself. So yeah, it's just it's a winner all the way around, you know. But well, Ben and Esther, thank you so much for being our guest today. It was such a pleasure to have you. Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you for having us. Wonderful to meet you too. And thank you for all you're doing.